So, um, yeah, exciting. DeSantis has, has published an economic plan, or at least something that looks for a little bit like an economic plan. Um, uh, the, you know, DeSantis uh, released his 10-point Declaration of Economic Independence uh, policy platform. Uh, so uh, we now have a policy platform from DeSantis. I mean, I read this. God, it, I mean, it, it is so difficult. It is so difficult um, it, to... Uh, it's so difficult in politics today. It's, it's so frigging uh, depressing. Uh, uh, and and the the dominance, just the dominance of, of Donald Trump and Donald Trump's attitude and Donald Trump's pr presentation uh, is just so overwhelming that, you know, you read a DeSantis economic plan and it's just hashed over Donald Trump. Uh, so, you know, how's he, how's he going to differentiate himself? And, and, and what the hell? What, what, what is he even... So, so this is... Declaration of Independ Economic Independence. This is how it starts out. And just put this in Donald Trump's voice, and this is Donald Trump, right? America is in a state of decline, militarily, culturally, and economically. People across our nation are collapsing under an economy that no longer works for the American family. Americans have been saddled with persistently high prices and weak economic growth. American families have seen the quality of life and economic security diminish while our national debt has exploded and our country loses, loses, to communist China. Uh, our policies can no longer be driven by the ruling class. It's time to name names and defeat those people and institutions that have formed the root cause of this economic melee. And a family-focused family -focused economic economy means having the courage to take on our enemies. Enemies. We are no longer to, uh, going to kowtow to who? Who are, who are the villains in the story? Who's the villains in the story? We are no longer going to kowtow to Wall Street and big corporations who don't have your interest front and center. We are no longer going to sell out to China at the expense of the American working family. The American dream is slipping away from our nation's middle class, federal government policy, da 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 da, -da. The bottom half of American households are less wealthy today than in 1989, while the top 10% have added $29 trillion in wealth over the same period. So let's, let's do... This is Bernie Sanders. But, you know, bottom line is... Um, bottom line is... Um, this is... It just, first of all, this is just wrong. The whole less wealth today than in 1989 is bullshit. I, I've often documented here that that's not true. Yes, our economy is growing slowly, but, you know, just compare us to the economies of Europe and see, uh, you know, to, so to start off with such darkness and malay and just, it's just so Donald Trump, you know, carnage in the streets of America in 2016, when, uh, January 2017, when he was inaugurated, when crime rates in America were at the lowest they'd been maybe ever, but certainly uh, since the 1950s. Uh, mass illegal immigration has undercut American jobs and wages, the rule of law, and our wider social fabric. So the problem is always the other. The immigrants, they're the problem. It's China and the immigrants. I mean, this is straight out of 2016 playbook by Donald Trump, straight out of it. And yet he doesn't have the, what is it, the charisma, the something? Right. Okay, so, uh, you know, he goes on and on and on. And multinational corporations, especially in sectors such as tech, have, been a massive sur have seen a massive surge in wealth while selling out assets and outsourcing our industrial base to China. Lies, lies, lies. I mean, this is it. You need to create enemies. You need to create people you're going to crush. Who are those people? Three. It's the same three as Trump. China. Illegal immigrants. Immigrants more broadly. And elites. Wall Street, multinational corporations, and the elites. Those are the three enemies that Donald Trump defined in 2016. And this is now the defining characteristic of the Republican Party. Not freedom, not liberty, but 
crushing the enemy, China, immigrants, elites. And elites, of course, include, right? So what is, what is he going to do to combat this? What is he going you know, to do to combat, to combat this? Um, oh, first, uh, we seek, uh, he says, we will declare our economic independence. From who are we going to make ourselves independent? From the failed elites that have orchestrated America's decline. Indeed, but those are the elites that have actually created the wealth. I mean, the slow economic growth, but at least something. I mean, if you take out those elites, what economic growth does America have? What wealth creation is there in America if you take out the elites? Wall Street, um, or, or, you know, multinational corporations, big tech. What, what do you have left? So, so we're going to declare independence from failed elites. And then we're going to declare independent, uh, independence from uh, federal spending that has inflated prices and plunged our nation to the brink of insolvency. This sounds great. This sounds great. But a plan? Some plan? How are we going to cut spending? Are we going to cut, are we going to reform Social Security, Medicare? Anything? Who else are we going to declare our economic independence? From the Chinese Communist Party that has run circles around us for a generation. Yeah. From central planners who seek to advance their political agenda at the expense of standard of living of African Americans. Oh, I really hope that is true. That would be fantastic if if he actually meant it. From a class of progressive corporations looking out for every interest except for that of the American people. Okay, so we're going to fight our own corporations. We're going to go after American corporations because we don't like their politics. Because we don't like their politics. This is America, not China, DeSantis. Corporations can have whatever politics they frigging want to. Ay. Number one, the number one, so he has 10 items here of what he's going to do. The number one item is taking back control of our economy from China and restoring our economic sovereignty. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? We have an abusive relationship with the CCP. Ever increasing, oh, here it goes, reverse our ever increasing trade deficit. But there's nothing wrong with trade deficits. I've explained that a million times. Probably have to explain it in a million more. And I won't convince anybody, or, or at least not a lot of people. Ban imports of goods made, you know, from uh, all this stuff. Okay, let's see. Uh, demand that American companies act in accordance with American interests. Which means preventing companies from sharing critical technologies with China. That's actually what Biden has done. And banning the same strategic assets like farmland. Farmland is a strategic asset. How is farmland a strategic asset? If farmland is a strategic asset, then everything is a strategic asset. Incentivize the reparations of U.S. capital from China. All right. And then he wants to achieving 3% growth by incentivizing investment, eliminating bureaucracy and red tape and keeping taxes low. Achieving 3%. Wow. How cool is that? Uh, so he's promising this typical uh, uh, tax and regulatory reform. Uh, he's going to, uh, you know, do away with the job crippling ideological regulations. He is going to eliminate the fourth branch of government. Eliminate it? Eliminate it? I'd like to see that. I'd like specifics. Eliminate the fourth branch of government is the regulatory agencies. He's going to get rid of them. Um, all right, this is one section where it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty standard Republican stuff, but it's pretty good. Uh, all right, unleashing America energy independence, another one that's good. Uh, ending environmental, social, and governance standards of political engineering by, by large investors. What the hell does that have to do with anything? Oh, will not tolerate the woke corporation US, using ESG as an end around for the constitutional system. ESG is a voluntary thing. The President of the United States and the federal government have no say in whether a, a company uses ESG or not. This is fascism. God. 
restoring merit and respect for individual as a central criteria for economic advancement. This is, uh, uh, yeah, root out DEI. I mean, DeSantis will instruct the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. Why not just get rid of the Civil Rights Division? ESG is voluntary. There's lots of pressure, but it's voluntary. There's no, uh, it, 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 God, anyway. Um, okay, if, reigning in the Federal Reserve. Appoint a chairman of the Federal Reserve who will focus on maintaining a stable dollar instead of political pressure of the day. Isn't that what every Federal Reserve chairman says he will do? Um, he's against a digital currency. I'll give him that. That's good. That's good. Opposing bailouts and holding bad economic actors responsible. Yeah, but who are the bailouts? Does this include everybody? Oh, and he's going to protect cryptocurrencies. That's good. And finally, fighting reckless. Oh, this is perfect. This is exactly, instead, of, this should be number one, but broader. But this is number 10. Fighting reckless and wasteful federal spending. Is anybody in the world, any politician out there, for reckless and wasteful federal spending? Is anybody out there uh, who's a politician not have this on their economic agenda? Instead of actually telling us, the things you're going to cut and the things you're going to reform and how you're going to cut significantly government spending. I mean, one of the items, I mean, that's really important in terms of spending is, uh, is uh, you know, getting rid of DEI and federal contracting. I, that's not going to save any money. It's just lip service. It's just sticking something in there and then sticking DEI in there because that's what he really cares about are the social issues. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. You know, about as good as you'd expect from any Republican candidate. My, my guess is that every single Republican candidate out there has an economic policy. There's nothing extraordinary here. There's nothing unusual here except for one thing, and that is it, it sets up enemies, and it's all about defeating enemies. It's not about a positive political program. Uh, the whole setup is a Donald Trump, here's the enemy, and, and we're going to crush the enemy. It, it, he even says, um, you know, even we win, they lose. That is the title, the title of his economic policy. This is in rondesantis.com. We win, they lose, which is a complete zero-sum game BS, again, Donald Trump, make America, MAGA kind of superficial nonsense. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's exactly how Donald Trump won in 2016. DeSantis is trying to mimic him, but be more, I guess, intellectual about it, more responsible about it. Uh, let's see what happens. I don't think, I don't think DeSantis has a chance because if you're going to, if you want Donald Trump, vote for Donald Trump. Why would you vote for DeSantis? I mean, unless Donald Trump's in jail, but he says he's going to run even from jail. So we might have a president governing from jail. But, um, you know, if you want Donald Trump, vote for Donald Trump. That's what I think people are going to. But, but if, you, if you want these kind of policies, why would you vote for Ron DeSantis? What is differentiating? Now, granted, we'll see how other Republican candidates try to differentiate if they can. But this is such a negative message. It's just disappointing. I, I really thought at the beginning, right, when, when, when we were just looking at DeSantis and he was going to be potentially, he was, he was going to be running, uh, I really thought that there was a chance that um, there was a chance that he would be better in some fundamental sense, right? That he would focus on some positive issues and focus really on the economic issues, and yeah, he's, he's, he, he doesn't have a chance. He's, he's not good in front of a camera. He's not good in debates. I don't think he's going to be good in the debates. And Donald Trump might not even show up for the first debate because he's got such a big lead that he doesn't need to show up. The real question is going to be, can anybody in the rest of the field, Scott or Nikki Haley, stand out? as a non-Ron DeSantis alternative to Donald Trump. Can, I mean, a lot of the money is focusing now on Scott. 
So a lot of the GOP a billion billionaires of abandoning DeSantis don't want Trump, and they're going for for Scott. Now whether Scott is is gonna rise to the occasion or just play his cards to try to get a VP slot, I don't know. But uh, but it would be great to have anybody but Trump um, or DeSantis at this point. Uh, it would be great to have anybody but those two as as the as the standard bearer of the Republican Party.